Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to talk to you about how to edit a landscape photograph in On One Photo Raw 2024. So come on, let's get into it and I'll walk you through it and talk you through it. So here we are in the browse catalog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my image. So I'm going to double click on this image. Give it a second and boom, there it is. Now, what do I normally start with when I'm editing a photograph? Well, one of the first things I'll always check to see is, is it actually level? And sometimes when you're shooting in sea conditions like this, the tripod may not be perfectly level because it's constantly sinking down to the sand, even though I do bed the tripod in fairly well from the start, but it can move. So the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna go to our crop tool, which is over here on the left panel. So once that pops up now, you can see it says, crop tool with a C afterwards. So it's actually telling you the keyboard shortcut is a C. So I can just click on that icon over in the left panel or I can just press the C on my keyboard. Once this pops up, then you can quite clearly see this photograph is not level. So how do we level it? We go up here and click on level. And once we do then, you'll see the little level icon is right next to our cursor. So what I can do is I can just click anywhere on the image and then drag across. And I'm gonna drag across to here and then let go and boom that's it and that looks a lot closer to level now you might still say it's slightly higher on this side than it is on that side but that's because the waves are there and they're above the horizon so that looks roughly around right i'll come back to it again if i don't think it's right in a couple of minutes so what i can do now is i can just go up here and i can click on the ok button here to apply the crop and rotation or I can just press the enter key on my keyboard. What's our next step? What's the next thing I want to do here now? So my next basic step is to go over here to Brilliance AI, click on that, give it a couple of seconds, and hopefully that's gonna do a reasonable job. That's not too bad. It's probably a bit too dark for my liking. So Brilliance AI is after giving us a fairly straightforward start now for our edit, or a basic edit. Now you might say, God, Kieran, I love that. Well, that's the end of that, so and just move on from here. Or you might say, you know, I actually want to go on and edit, edit this a small bit more. Now you can change the camera profiles here. So I can click on here and it goes on one standard. Then it is landscape, portrait, vivid, neutral. There's camera landscape, camera neutral, portrait, standard, and vivid. Then there are dedicated profiles for your camera. And in all honesty, one of the ones I generally prefer from a starting point is the Z8 camera flat. Because once you go on landscape, it's, it's just a bit too strong in my mind. So I will normally go on camera flat and then I will adjust from there. Now you will also notice there is a small bit of vignetting in the two corners here. So we're gonna get rid of that by cropping later on. That's something I'm gonna come back to as I mentioned before. So the basic adjustments, we have our exposure is gonna basically brighten every single part of the scene. So what I'll do is I'll just bring back that back to roughly where it was our contrast then is gonna increase the contrast in the image. So again, if I pull that back here, we'll get a very sort of milk and watery feel. Whereas if I pop this up along here, you'll see there's a far more of an extreme between the blacks and the whites. So a contrast again is a personal choice and a personal taste. It's one of the last settings I actually go back to generally speaking. The highlights then, what they do is, if I adjust this down along, that's going to adjust the brighter parts of the scene, which would generally be your sky, or in this case, it could be the water too as well if you have reflections. So I can bring that up, or I can bring it back down along to get my desired effect. And you might say, yeah, that's kind of balancing it out a small bit better. Our mid-tones then are going to adjust the mid-tones in the image itself. Again, fairly straightforward. And our shadows then are going to adjust the shadow details. So bringing them up or bringing them down. So again, I'd probably bring that back somewhere roughly around there. Our whites then are going to adjust the brighter parts in the scene. As you can see, it's primarily adjusting just around where the sun is. So what you do is you pull that back to roughly where you want it. And it might be somewhere there, let's say, depending on the effect you're going for. The blacks then are going to affect how black your blacks basically are. So if I pull that back to, again, somewhere roughly around there. So the next most important one here now is color. So when you get to color, we have our color temperature, which we can adjust here then. 
So if I pull it back down along, it'll bring a small bit more blue, as you can see there now. And if I bring it back up along and make it warmer, it's going to give us more yellowy golden tones. So if we leave that as set, so that's the way it was set in camera. But what I would do is I would just pull that down a tiny little fraction. Somewhere around there is looking a lot closer to the way it was in reality. Or tint then, if we want to verge more towards green or verge more towards purple. So that's affecting the tint in the photograph itself. Next, we have saturation and vibrancy. Saturation, obviously, is going to increase the overall amplitude of the colour in the actual photograph. So you can bring it back more black and white, or we can really go completely nuts with it. Less is more with saturation and vibrancy. There are a lot more controls in On One Photo Raw 2024, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how I would edit this photograph. Next, we've got a noise and sharpening. Again, we have No Noise AI, Tech Sharp AI. We can select both here too as well. This photograph was shot at ISO 64. There isn't an awful lot of noise in it. And because I was using a graduated filter, I don't need to recover an awful lot of shadow detail. So I don't need that here. What I will do is I will adjust the sharpening in the photograph. Now, the handy thing to know here is I can adjust my sharpening amount so I can pull this way off up along and say, look, give it a couple of seconds for that to pull in there now and say, yeah, that's looking, that's looking sharper there now, right? Kind of happy enough with that if I, if I pull in the rocks there now and say, yeah, that looks good. The one thing you have to be careful of though is if there's too much sharpening and fine details in the sea and things like that, it just doesn't look right. So how do you adjust that? You adjust that by using the threshold slider. Now, if you press the Alt key and click on threshold, give it a second, it'll go black and white. Now, when it's all white, that's showing you everything that's white there now is going to be sharpened. Whereas when I increase the threshold slider, if I go all the way up, it'll go predominantly black. So you can see just the outline of those rocks is what's going to be sharpened. Whereas when I pull it back down along, it's telling you here now, it's going to be more of the body of the rocks. Slowly getting better and better and you say, you know, how far do you go? In this photograph, I will probably leave it around there somewhere, I would think. If I let go of that and say, okay, I'm going to pull back along there now again. So that's my sharpening. Lens correction, I can apply that. That will, that will correct any distortion image. It'll also brighten the image for you slightly too as well. So the next thing I want to do with this photograph now is add an effect. So what I'm going to do is going to go up here to effects. So I just want to add a filter here now. So if I click on add filter, and if I go down here and if I try glow, so I'm just going to try that one. So I'll click on glow. I have the amount slider. So that affects the intensity or the effect that's applied to the actual photograph. So when I pull that all the way up, you can see how much of a change it's creating. It is softening the image nicely though. Now I can go on normal, lighter or darker. I'm going to try lighter here now. And I can adjust the intensity of that. Because what I'm looking for, and then the halo here too as well. What I'm looking for is a specific effect here now. Now, you might say, Kieran, that is 200 times too strong. And yes, it probably is. You also have your mode here too as well, the glow mode. So I can go on soft light. I can go on soft strong. Screen, multiply, darken or lighten. Lighten is the one I'm looking for there now. Now, what I want to do or what I need to do here now is add a mask. So what I'm going to do here is I'm unmasking. I'm going to select region in mask AI. Now I can select all, none, background, foreground, flora, whatever else. If, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all and I'm going to select paint out. And then I'm going to select apply. So what this is going to do is it's going to affect every part of my photograph. Now, when I go in here now and when I start pulling across here, it is going to remove that effect from the areas I'm painting. So if we look at the rocks down here now, I can just go over that nicely and go down here, and it's going to darken the image, but it's also going to bring it back to the way it was. So if I click down along here too as well, I'm just doing this really quickly. So if I go to the amount slider there now, and increase that up and down, you can see how it's increasing the intensity of the effect. But the intensity of the effect is only being applied to the sky now, it's not affecting those rocks. The tip of the rock here is still being cut, all right? So what I'm going to do is, um, I am just going to bring down the size a small little bit, and I'm going to go here. I'm just going to just paint out that section there. And I'm doing this really roughly now. Again, this is something you can spend a small bit of time at if you want. And just go in along here now. And just mask that through and boom, 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 boom. 
there and just go over along the edges there too as well. Now, the one thing with this is it doesn't need to be 100% perfect because of the fact that there isn't a major difference and it's only really a transition in the softness. So when I click over along here now, you can see there actually is another layer of rocks behind these rocks. That's why it looks like there's actually sort of a, a double image. Right, and just go to our foreground here too as well again and just click that out. That's it. Yeah, do you know what? I'm kind of happy enough with that now. So okay, let's give us a lovely soft kind of a dreamy effect in our sky there now. So what I'm going to do is go back to our develop panel here now again. So here now we're going to play around with our exposure controls, our contrast, our highlights to get the image just looking the way we want it. So again, if I boost my exposure, look at that lovely soft effect we're getting in the sky there now. It just looks really nice there now. To me now that looks really, really nice. So that is looking kind of close enough to the way I would like that photograph. Now, the one thing we haven't touched is our saturation as of yet, and which is why I'm coming back to this next. So again, I'm going to whack that slider up and you're going to see how much of an effect it's having on the photograph. So you don't want to go that far. I would normally go up maybe 10, 12, 13, something along those lines. Even at that, I think that's a small bit much. Um, I'm going to bring it back down to about 8 or 9. Give it a couple of seconds for that to pull in along there now. And yeah, that's looking a lot closer there now, right? So the next thing I think we could really use here now is a gradient filter, just to balance out. You see the dark in the rocks here and the dark here, and we just don't have that level of darkness down here. This is quite bright in comparison to the rocks here too as well. So what we want to do is just help balance out that photograph. So what I want to do is get a gradient filter. So if I go here on local, and what I can do is add adjustment. As soon as I click on add adjustment, the properties come up here. So we can adjust the masking, blending, or text. So I'm just going to close this down along. And I have two options here of getting a gradient filter. I can either press the M key on my keyboard, which is a shortcut to the masking bug, or if I go over here and select the masking, so it's this fellow here, if I select that, and then I'm the masking brush here now, and if I go up here, there is the masking bug up here. So if I click on that, and it says masking bug M. So if I select the masking bug, it's going to give me a few different options. You have shape. So we have reflected gradient, gradient, edges, or center. So gradient is the one I want. So here we have it. Now, if I just click anywhere on the screen, it's going to open out a gradient. So how you move it around is click on the big circle, and you can drag it and drag it up and down the screen. So I'm just going to position it there roughly for a starting point. If I want to adjust the rotation or the angle it's at, just click on the small circle and hold it, and then spin it around the angle you want. Now I might say, look, it's something more like that is what I want. The other option we have then is adjusting the feathering. So you can see up here there is little to no effect, and here there's all the effect. So if I adjust the feathering, I can just click on either of those dotted white lines and pull them down. And you can see now all of a sudden the transition between having little to no effect to having the full effect isn't as strong, or it takes longer for a transition to one from one to the other. If I pull down the exposure a bit, you can see it a lot better. So if I pull this in along now, See how the transition is changing? It's now stronger. So if I actually pull this up a small bit here just for demonstration purposes, and when I adjust this here now, you can see the transition isn't as strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down here, back to where I wanted it again, and just adjust the feathering so it's roughly around the right. My exposure I pulled down dramatically just to show you, so I'm going to bring that back up along a bit, not all the way up, and just adjust the angle of this a small bit. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is the water is after getting darker too as well, because I adjusted my exposure above and top. So I'm going to bring my exposure back again, and you can see the water being brighter, it just looks naturally a lot better. But again, our shadows aren't right, so I'm going to pull my shadows down until I find a point where my shadows, because as I'm adjusting my shadows, it's not really adjusting the white in the water. It is a small bit, but it's not really adjusting the white in the water. I could also adjust my blacks if I wanted to. Pull it down, and I get a lot more contrast in those rocks then. And what I can really do then is just bring my exposure up a small bit, and that is going to add far more of a kick to that water in the foreground. That's looking kind of good enough. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back here to the Develop tab and just have a look at that there now thinking, yeah, all of a sudden, we've got a reasonably nice photograph. Now, the one other thing 
And this is the one other minor thing I would change in this photograph. We have a lot of orange and yellows and whatnot popping here. We have our blue sky above there that looks a bit kind of, it looks a bit blah. Just being completely honest, I just don't like the look of it. Now again, this isn't a beautiful photograph, but I'm just using this as, an, I suppose, I'm using this as an example to show you. But what I'd like to do is add a small bit more blue back into the sky there maybe. Just to give it a small bit more of a kick, just in that section. So again, what we can do is, we can go here to local, we can go to add adjustment, that's going to pop up, I'm just going to get rid of that for now, and I'm going to press the M key there now. So I'm in my masking, I go up here then, click my masking bug, my gradient is on, and I'm going to pull that down along. Now I'm going to spin this around, because what I want to do is add a small bit more blue to that element of the sky. So I'm going to pull this back here now somewhere, and... I'm going to put this in the middle, just so I have a bit more control over where it's going. Okay, now that looks kind of good enough. Now, the weird thing about this is I'm going to leave my exposure alone, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my temperature control. So I'm going to pull this back down along, and look at that. Now, all of a sudden, that was just really simple there. Now, I'm just going to go back to my Develop tab. Look at that. Now, it's probably a, it's probably a slight fraction too much. It probably is. And I'm just looking at it there now. It probably is. But you see the way the purples and everything else are popping in those clouds now. If I go back to my adjustments there now again, if I switch it off, that's the way it was. There was, there was sort of a, a bluey-greeny tint to the sky. Whereas when I switch that adjustment back on along again, you can see it's a bit more purpley now. So again, I probably went a bit too far on that. And that's why it's so incredibly handy just to be able to go back and just be able to adjust those individual sliders in seconds. That's looking reasonably good there now. The only other thing I would probably ever want to do in this photograph is maybe just darken down this section here because it, it's really not that beautiful and it is, it, it's really catching my eye, I suppose, being honest with you, just, just the section here. So again, we can just go and end the adjustment if we want. Switch that off and I'm in the masking bug there at the moment, aren't I? I am. So I'm going to select my size. So I'm going to bring the size way off up along and I'm going to adjust my opacity, right? So we're painting in, sorry, I'm going to bring this back here, 56. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to darken this down here a lot just so I can see where I'm painting in. And I'm just going to adjust all this down along here. Boom, 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 boom. And pull this back down along and say, right, look straight away. Look how much better that looks. Now that is an extreme case. I'm going to pull this back again in a second. Don't want anyone start shouting at their screens just yet saying, oh my God, you just ruined a reasonably okay photograph. The more I paint over it, the stronger the effect is going to be because remember, I adjusted the opacity of the brush tool. What's really cool here then is if you really want those lines to pop a small little bit, I can actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up here and adjust the opacity back down along, maybe bring it down to, go down to 20% because I don't want it that much. And I'm just going to select that section there. So that's just highlighting that and I'm going to paint over that again. There we go. And just there maybe. And there and there yeah and then just in the center here what i can do is just bring that brush size down pull it back down along here we're going to go maybe try 200 yeah i'm just going to pull this down here oh oh i messed it i think i messed that up today I? I did know it's a yeah I'm going to have to go back and try and correct that because I'm after making a complete pig's ear of that. You can actually see the brush strokes there. Oh, that looks better than now. And like that. And like this here now again. Just get rid of that white line there, a small bit in the center. And I'm going to pull this down here. Yeah. That looks good. And now we're going to adjust our exposure to exactly what we want. So I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to bring it to about, I'm going to chance it about there now. And all of a sudden we've gone from having kind of a, a reasonably shocking photograph to have a reasonably good one. So I'm going to just switch that adjustment on and off. So that's before the adjustment and that's after the adjustment. Again, it's only just that very slight little kick is what you're trying to give the photograph itself. So... If I close that down along, and then we're going to go to our next adjustment, which was our sky above. Again, it's just helping finish that off a small bit. And every time you go back to it, 
you'll be lucky it isn't saying, do you know, did I maybe go a small bit too far? But again, I can just click on the adjustment and I can go here and say, look, do you know, maybe that should be a tiny bit more green there now. Dricky, that's it. That's the way it should look. So there and there. So you're just bringing the photograph back to the way it was when you saw it. So yeah, this is not a beautiful photograph, but this is just to show you what you can do with On One Photo Raw 2024, what's possible with it, and what effects you can create with it, and how you can utterly transform your photographs in just a couple of minutes. So thanks again for watching. Mind yourselves and see you out there.